It's the Deck Talking Devil back with you again for really what will amount to the first video of this new year 2020. Hopefully you guys enjoyed your holiday season. Uh, some of you guys may still be celebrating, uh, but hopefully all is well with you and you transitioned into this new year just fine. Uh, you should have some, some goals set. Not saying you set some for the new year in particular, but you may still be working on your five-year plan, your 10-year plan, wherever you're at on that journey. Keep trucking, stay motivated, keep your head up. Don't let them haters get you down. Hey, look, I was reading. Uh, you, you guys know I like to bring you a book every now and then. Keep you on your toes. Uh, the Hidden Origins of Islam by Dr. Walter Williams. Pretty good book here. Uh, you can pick it up on Amazon. It's it's not that expensive. I may have paid like uh, 15, 20 bucks for this book. But it's pretty good. Dr. Walter Williams, uh, he's an icon. He's a legend in the African-American community. He did the historical origins of Christianity as well, which is another great read. Uh, what I found, though, with Dr. Walter Williams, either you love him or you hate him. You know, some of his uh, information can be a bit of a stretch, but he also brings out some some real gems in his research and uh, his scholarship. So, you know, you can go either way with Dr. Walter Williams, but this is one of his uh, pivotal, uh, pivotal works. Uh, so, yeah, Dr. Walter Williams, The Historical Origins of Islam. Now... What I wanted to talk about, I had one of my subscribers, actually a guy who follows me on uh, Facebook, asked me to do a video in response to this video that's gone viral over the internet uh, in the last week or so. Now I know that today we got hit with the news of Kobe Bryant and his daughter along with uh, I think three other passengers dying on a helicopter crash in California. I'll deal with that in a separate video cause it's some things that I definitely wanna address surrounding that whole nother topic. But before the Kobe Bryant thing, that was this video on Facebook, on Instagram. I think I first saw one on Instagram and then I was sent this follow-up video by one of my subscribers on Facebook. And he asked me if I'd do a video addressing what I saw on this video. I was a bit reluctant to do it because this is a pretty touchy subject. Uh, it, it's disgusting if you watch the video. The video features a mother who's making a video response to a previous post that her daughter had did uh, concerning the mother. Now, uh, when I saw the video on Instagram, I didn't, at that time, I hadn't, this video that I'm talking about now, hadn't been released by the mother. So this was the daughter's video where she was recording the mother in the kitchen, kind of cleaning up, and she cracked them on, you know, about a situation that had happened the night prior where she was in her bedroom sleep and the mother's boyfriend came in and according to the daughter, he molested her. Uh, the daughter tells this to her mom and her mom says, here we go with this shit again. Uh, which kind of implies that this isn't the first uh, time the daughter has accused the mother's boyfriend of this kind of behavior. Something had transpired prior to this and this is another account of it happening. So the daughter takes it to her mom and I'm thinking based off of how the mom responded the first time, the daughter figured, I'm gonna record this shit this time. Uh, so she records the video of her reporting to her mother that the mother's boyfriend molested her the night prior. The mother becomes irate. Uh, she calls her daughter, you know, everything but a child of God. And uh, she then 
victimizes uh, the daughter again, verbally. She attributes blame to the daughter uh, because the daughter had been dressed scantily while the mother's boyfriend was present. Uh, the mother says that her daughter was walking around wearing boy shorts and booty shorts and all of this with her boyfriend present. And in essence, she brought the molestation on herself. Uh, problem with that. Because if she felt that her daughter had been dressed inappropriately, why had that not been addressed before it led to the molestation? Why is it that the mother waits until the daughter comes to her after being molested by the mother's boyfriend before she addresses the fact that the daughter should never have been dressed inappropriately, thus tempting the man to come on to her sexually. Why did the mother fail to mother her daughter prior to the daughter being molested? That's the first problem. So that should have been put in check. Why would the daughter feel that it was okay to walk around like that in the presence of her mother's boyfriend unless the mother had created an environment where that type of behavior and that type of dress in front of males was appropriate, right? I can look back at my childhood and I can tell you ain't nowhere in hell you would have wore anything showing no fucking ass cheek no, no cleavage, nothing like that in front of my aunts, in front of my mother, in front of any of the women in our family while males were present. And those males could have been your cousins, they could have been your uncles, they didn't give a damn who it was. If it was a male in that house who was not your brother, you was going to have on some clothes and be dressed appropriately. So it's a lack to parent prior to the situation ever coming up. And it's all is there uh, underneath the surface of what said in this video that the daughter initially posted about her mother's boyfriend molesting her. All right. The mother in, in the video posted by the daughter starts to take her boyfriend's side. She starts to say that he's a good man. He's a good man, and I'm not fixing to lose him over you. And she starts to degrade her daughter, starts to criticize her daughter, starts to verbally abuse her daughter in defense of the man whom her daughter has just accused of molestation. In what universe is a man who molests your daughter a good man? In what fucking universe does that shit exist? What they do that at? When is it ever okay as a man to molest a child? Period. Point blank. Any fucking child. Yet alone the child of the woman you're dating. And then the woman turns around and rebukes the child. In defense of a man who molested the child. So we already see some, some flawed judgment here. We see some character flaws here. Uh, with the mother as well as with the child. There, there's some problems here that's underneath the surface that we'll address. So this was the first video. Uh, in conclusion to that video that the daughter posted reporting to her mother that she had been molested by the mother's boyfriend, the mother's heard and seen telling the daughter to get the fuck out of the house. Get out. Get out. I'm keeping the man. He's staying here. And the daughter challenges her by saying, so you're choosing him over me. And the mother concurs. She replies in the affirmative. She says, hell yeah, I'm keeping him here, a good man, I'm not losing him for your ass. Get the fuck out. Alright, 
This shit has Tyler Perry written all over it. Right? You can see Tyler Perry, you can see Madea ass pulling the gun out of fucking purse already. This shit is a drama. So now we have a video that's uh, emerged of the mother making a response to the daughter's video. And I'm going to put some clips of that video in this video so that you can see what I'm talking about. If I can, I'll put the link to that video that the mother made in the comment section or in the description below so that you can check out the video that I'm referring to. Uh, now, I don't have the link to the initial video that the daughter posted on Instagram where she told the mother she had been molested. I don't have that link. If you do, feel free to drop it in the comment section for me. Uh, bail me out on this one. Uh, look out for me. I got you. Uh, so, I'll put that down there so you can check the video out. Now, I got to warn you, this isn't something that you'll want to watch with your children present. Anybody with virgin ears, uh, you don't want to have them present when you watch that video. Uh, and I must warn you that if you've ever been a victim of sexual assault or sexual abuse, then you may want to be careful, be cautious watching this because it can trigger some old emotions and some old feelings that you may have buried and may have been able to move on from your own grief and your own pain, this may rehash some of those emotions. It's just that fucking intense. If I could describe it in one word, I think I did earlier, it's disgusting. But there are telltale signs of the root causes to this all throughout the video. And if you can see past the minutia, if you can get past the fluff, the, the charade, the facade, you actually see a woman who's been hurt and is responding in the only way that she knows how, which is to go into a shell, to defend myself, go on the defensive and uh, uh, kind of push everybody away to protect herself. So the mother makes this video and she starts out talking about disrespectful children. And this video is pretty long too. It's like 45 minutes uh, long. Uh, turn your volume down when you watch it because she's literally yelling to the top of her voice. Uh, it's a pretty intense video. So uh, turn your volume down a bit and uh, brace yourself because the language that you'll hear in that video will make me look like Mr. Rogers in the neighborhood. Uh, real shit. Uh, she starts out talking about disrespectful children and how she would never let any child who came out of her ass eating her shit disrespect her. Uh, you can see the tone of this video right from the jump. Nasty as hell. Uh, she makes the comment a couple of minutes in that she should have swallowed her daughter. She, she should have took the load, the seed, into her mouth and swallowed it so her daughter would have never been born. She tells the daughter, I should have swallowed your ass so you never would have been born. Then she tells the child that I should have squeezed my legs together and broke your motherfucking neck when you was coming out. This is the mother making these comments to her daughter. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Absolutely reprehensible. Uh, it is filth. It's a disgrace for a parent to ever fix their lips to speak to a child in that manner. Uh, regardless of how disrespected they may have felt, Regardless uh, of how hurt they may have been, that kind of language to say those things, to, to subject that child to that level of disrespect and abandonment 
publicly is unacceptable. Uh, so the mother goes on through this situation about the daughter making a video about her and about the daughter making a video accusing her boyfriend of molesting her. <clears throat> and the mother again blames the daughter and says the daughter brought it on herself by wearing inappropriate clothes around the man. And what do you expect? I would say only in the era of Trump do men feel that it's okay to grab them by the pussy. Uh, I would say that. But the history of molestation, the history of sexual abuse and assault goes back way before Trump. The social normalization the social uh, desensitizing a society that's been going on for centuries. And I, I mean centuries. Uh, go back to the Greeks. Go, go back to the Greek Empire. Uh, th this shit's been going on a long time. To desensitize society to things of this nature. To men sleeping with young boys, to women sleeping with young boys, to men, uh, the Prophet Muhammad, sleeping with a fucking nine-year-old girl. It's embedded in religion after religion, so it's been institutionalized in this country, in this society, around the world. It's been institutionalized primarily by religions, how dare you say religions condone such behavior? Is it not a fact in the Quran, in the Bible? How old do you think Mary was, the mother of Jesus? Uh, she supposedly was around 14. And she got fucked by the Holy Ghost. That's right. Fucked by the Holy Spirit. And gave birth to God. So it's a, it's a long history of religious leaders, religious icons, Messiah figures, sleeping with underage children. Need I bring up the Catholic Church and the Archdiocese and all of these accounts of, of molestation, statutory rape? Need I bring up how many Pastors, Bishop Eddie Loans. Need I bring up all of these religious leaders who's been found to have molested children, to have had sex with underage children? This is inherent in religion. It is a sickness within religion. And it would not be present in religion unless religion had created an environment in which it could thrive. Same thing with this mother creating an environment where the daughter felt that it was appropriate to wear boy shorts, boxes, booty shorts in front of her grown boyfriend. And then we turn around and victimize the victim again. We make them a victim again because now we're going to hurl accusations and criticism at the child for being dressed inappropriately, assaulting them yet again. This is what the mother's in essence doing to her own daughter. She's assaulting her daughter again. This time for the whole world to see. All of the verbal uh, assault, abuse, the disrespect that the mother hurls at this child. It, I mean, it's beyond me how any mother could fix her mouth to call her daughter bitches and hoes and sluts. Telling you fucking out of all three pans, Lee. Whatever the fuck that means. Uh, cause I have no idea if you know what that means to fuck out of all three pants leg, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, 
Because I have no fucking idea what it means to fuck out of all three pants legs. Uh, but apparently her daughter was doing it. So uh, the mother goes on and the mother starts to open up about some things. She says she's caught the daughter having sex in the house multiple times. And that's the real reason she was putting the daughter out of her home. Because the daughter had sex in her home multiple times and the mother caught the daughter having sex in the home. I still don't know how old the daughter is. I, I, I don't know her age yet. I don't know if she's 18 or uh, under 18. I'm really not sure how old she is. Uh, and I'm saying this because at a certain point, there should have been a conversation had with the daughter by the mother about the birds and the bees, about sex and healthy sexual relationships and healthy sexuality and being comfortable with yourself sexually and being responsible with yourself sexually and about how energies are transmitted sexually and how yokes, buns, sexual ties are created when you open yourself up to that level of intimacy, there should have been some conversations had by this age. So again, we're seeing over and over a, a, a pattern of a mother failing to parent her child properly. Now, part of this goes to the fact that she says the, the daughter... I guess was taken away from her at nine years of age because the mother had a drug problem and the daughter was raised by someone else uh, who according to the mother is a elderly woman who raised her daughter. So we have a daughter who's been subjected to a mother who has a drug problem stripped from her mother's custody, placed into foster care now she's a victim of sexual molestation. <clears throat> this lays bare problems that's an epidemic in our society. What protection is there? What rehabilitation promise is there? What hope is there for children who find themselves in the care of the state? When these children get thrown into that cycle of foster care, foster homes, foster parents, uh, youth homes, halfway houses, all of this kind of shit. When they get thrown into that vicious cycle, what hope do we realistically have that this child will be able to recover, to rebound mentally? What programs are we putting in place to ensure that this child recovers from the mental trauma that they've been subjected to. Many of these children will probably be clinically diagnosed with PTSD. If you don't know what it's like to be raised in a home of a parent who's, who has a drug problem, then you can't speak to this unless you've walked a mile in their shoes you really can't speak to this. What it does to you emotionally to see the person who you held higher than anybody. Y'all know how we feel about mama. To see mama hooked on drugs, that shit does something to you. It crushes you. It hurts you at a level that you could never be hurt by anything else happening in your life. When mama goes down, it damages you. I mean, it, it hurts you to the core. So that, that traumatic mental experience, that traumatic emotional roller coaster living with a drug addict. I'm speaking from experience because my mom had a drug problem when I was a child for years. So I'm speaking from experience. It's an emotional roller coaster when she don't come home at night and you thinking, did she overdose? And you lay up awake at night, worrying if your mama's laying on the side of a curb somewhere, overdosed off drugs. And then when she do come home, the mood swings. 
the ups and downs, the highs and lows, coming home to find your belongings outside in the middle of the road because you've been evicted yet again. If you've never walked a mile in those shoes, you can't speak to that. But I have. So I know what it must have been like for this young girl being raised in a home with a parent who has a drug problem. And from everything that's been said, the father was not in the picture. Because you can't watch this video and not wonder, where's this child's father to defend her? Where's this child's father to sit down and have a conversation and get some order in, in this whole chaotic environment? Where's the father? The mother kind of gives us a glimpse. She makes some comments in passing about the father wasn't shit and, and all of this. I don't know if the father's locked up or wherever the father is, but she makes some comments about the father. So we know we're dealing with an absentee father and a toxic mother. And an absentee father, which I had, never seen my biological father, an absentee father and a toxic mother will produce a damaged child. The father was not in the picture. The child's being subjected to this emotional roller coaster of a parent, a mother who strung out on drugs, loses custody of her, goes into foster care. And then she's returned back to her mother's custody. I went into foster care. My mother was arrested when I was very young. Uh, got into a domestic dispute with her at the time, her husband. Uh, and lo and behold, the dispute was over me. Got into a, a domestic dispute. She ended up getting arrested. They both ended up getting arrested. Me and my brothers was put into foster care for a while. And then we were placed back into my mother's custody. I'm speaking from experience. That's why I was reluctant to do the video in the first place. Because like I said, if you've ever lived this shit, you know it rehashes some old feelings that you may have already worked your way through and recovered from, put behind you. And you don't want to open up this can of worms once you got the lid on that motherfucker, right? So I'm speaking from experience. The child's placed back in the mother's custody. The mother is a recovering addict. Because I can tell you that the mother kept saying she'd been clean off drugs for eight years. Uh, my mother also got clean from drugs. And I think by the time she um, actually died from cancer, my mother had been clean about nine to ten years. All right, I can tell you within that nine to ten years, there were several times where she relapsed. She didn't go on a bench, but she got high. But she didn't get hooked like she was prior, where well, she was just using it all the fucking time, but there were relapses in between that time. And I wonder if that's the same case with this mother, if she's relapsed. It's a struggle, you know, to try to free yourself from that entanglement of drugs that once those drugs get a hope to you, it's hard as hell. But if you're determined, if you make up in your mind that I got shit to live for and I want to be the best me, then there's nothing that can stop you, nothing that can overcome your will and your determination. It's going to be a struggle. It's going to be a fight, but it's possible. It's doable. It's hard as hell. Hard work. Tenacious. But you can do it. You can overcome addictions and you can get your shit together, not for anybody else, but for you. Because you owe it to you to be the best you that you can be. To love yourself when everybody else counted you out. Love yourself and pick yourself up by the bootlaces and get the fuck up. Time out for excuses. This woman did that. Whether or not she made some, some relapses, whether or not she made some mistakes, whether or not she binged, whether or not she ever went back to it off and on or whatever. That's part of her struggle that... I know all too well. But here she is 
rehabilitating herself off of drugs. And this situation happens with her daughter. Her daughter's been molested by the mother's boyfriend. The mother goes on this rampage against the daughter. And then the mother brings up some stuff. And the mother says that she too had been raped by two men. And then she says that the daughter had also been raped. So here we go with what the daughter brought up in the first video. When the daughter made her video and the mama said, here we go with this shit again. Listen to the mama in her video. Well, she says, I was raped and you was too. So before this, they had already been sexually abused in some other situation. How many black families, how many families, period, does this shit ring true to? Absentee father, drugs in the house. A drug addict, sexually abused by those close to you, verbally abused, I mean, strike after strike against you. We know this story all too well. This is why Tyler Perry was so successful when he started making his movies because he put our dirty laundry out there for the world to see. This shit is real. And he was so successful because so many people related to it because we live this shit every day. And this family is a prime example. What hope is there for a person who's been abused sexually, who's been abandoned by parents, who's been assaulted who's been verbally abused, emotionally abused, psychologically abused, who's just been used and abandoned and thrown away. What hope is there for rehabilitation? And you would think the obvious answer is the church. But we see this woman in the video. Over and over again, she starts sounding like Juanita Bynum. She starts sounding like she about to start going into a sermon and preaching a little bit. And she even goes into saying the Bible talks about that. The Bible talks about this. God don't like this. God don't like this. She started talking about that. So we start seeing what she tried to revert to, to deliver her, to bring her out of that mindset, to save her soul, to redeem her from the hell that she was in. Was Christianity. As woefully under equipped as Christianity is to save any motherfucking body, uh, it is a poor choice uh, to go to to get real help. Go to a psychiatrist. Go and sit on somebody's sofa and talk to somebody who your ass can actually see. Praying that Jesus may work for you. It may get you through some tough shit. But I can tell you that a lot of these pastors would be more effective if they would sit their ass on somebody's sofa and get counseling. What we have in the church is a systemic problem of people who's been damaged trying to repair other damaged people and a lot of time the most damaged motherfucker in the church is the one in the pulpit and everybody's looking to him to be a savior and then when he fuck up again now everybody's disappointed well he was damaged to begin with and the problem is we're never fully being rehabilitated we're never getting the, the help that we need mentally. Because if you don't see mental health written all over this fucking video that this woman posted, if you don't see mental health written in big, bold-ass letters, then you might need a sofa, too. You, you, you might need to go sit on somebody's sofa, too. Because this woman clearly is crying out for help. Through all of the, the verbal assaults, all of the disrespect, 
all of the accusations that she's making against her daughter. What we're dealing with here is two black women who's been sexually abused, who's used drugs, who's turned to sex to try to distract them as a way of escape from the hell that they in, in here and in here. So they turn to sex to try to pull them out of that dark, that dark place. And sex is ill-equipped to do so. Tantalizes the body. Makes you feel good. Makes you feel wanted. But that shit is hollow as fuck. Because you can have sex with person after person after person and never really establish a real true connection where they actually give a damn. And what you end up doing is attracting the same kind of shit that you're trying to get away from. You attract damaged motherfuckers. Or you attract motherfuckers who like to damage other people. Because as long as you're reaching out, you're sending out that signal, that SOS signal. As long as you're sending out that signal for help from a damaged place, the only motherfuckers who's going to find you is the ones who look for damaged people. That's all you're going to track. It's the ones who prey on damaged people. So you got to be able to get yourself together first. This is where we talk about wholeness. This is where we talk about holistic health. This is when we talk about knowledge yourself. When you get your whole being rehabilitated, renewed, refreshed, refined, and redefined. Before you try to establish that intimate connection, that intimate relationship with somebody else, you got to fill the void. If you don't fill the void with yourself, then when you allow somebody else inside, they're going to find that it's lonely in there because you emptied in a motherfucker. You're just a shell. You're just a foreshadow of what you could be or what you were before you was damaged. And people get tired of talking and all they hear is echoes. So when he's trying to speak to your heart and you empty his hell on the inside, all he can hear is his own voice coming back to him. Because nothing he says can repair what's been fucked up in there. You got to do that. This girl has to do that. This mother has to do that. Before they can mend their relationships with one another, they got to fix themselves. They got to realize that happiness is not found anywhere else. Not in the fucking Bible. Not in the fucking clouds. Not in the Quran. Happiness is within. Happiness is your true state. You don't have to do anything to be happy. Other than be. All you have to do is be. And if you just allow yourself to be yourself. Then you'll find that happiness has always been there the whole time. This has been the Deck Talking Devil. Hopefully I said something that's resonated with you. If so, hit that like button. Share this video. Subscribe. And don't forget to turn on those notifications. So that the next time... There's a new video. You'll be the first one to know. Until next time, keep growing, my friends.